On July 27, 1959, U.S. Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel William Rankin was forced to eject from his fighter at an altitude of 47,000 feet. It is very normal that people lose consciousness at that altitude due to the very low atmospheric pressure and oxygen percentage. And to add insult to injury, he entered into a well-developed thunderstorm where he suffered from many weather hazards such as thunder, lightning, hailstones and severe rain. He was also trapped inside the storm for about 40 minutes where he was battling for his survival. And to this day no such incident was reported and there is no other tale of someone who encountered the same circumstances. Can anyone survive being inside a thunderstorm? And could thunderstorms affect people on the ground or even sea creatures? And most importantly, what happened to the Marine and what were his thoughts during this ordeal? Welcome to From Nerd to Fun, and let's begin right now. To get the right picture about thunderstorms, we should first know that they are simply clouds but with very special characters that contribute to their extreme and hazardous effects. It is also known for meteorologists as cumulonimbus clouds. And a good way to understand them is to know how they are formed in the first place. These cumulonimbus clouds are the mature stage of the thunderstorm which all the weather hazardous conditions happen in and it is in the middle of two other stages. In the preceding stage, a normal cloud is formed in the following sequence, as the warm air rises, its temperature decreases until it reaches the point where it turns to water in the presence of sufficient humidity. This happens continuously while forming normal clouds, but in some cases like when cold air starts to meet warm air at very high speeds, this upward movement continues to happen very fast that no rain comes out of the cloud. Instead this rain keeps moving down then up trapped inside the cloud in form of water and hailstones that travel at a speed that reaches 3,000 feet per minute. It takes this cloud 15 minutes to expand to 20,000 feet in height and 3 to 5 miles in diameter forming a well-developed mature thunderstorm. All this is called a single-cell thunderstorm. This cell can join other cells to make a cluster called a multi-cell thunderstorm, or they may align in a line called a squall line. By having this image in mind, it is easy to discover the reasons behind each phenomenon that is related to these kinds of storms. Because of the fast movements of air, water and hailstones in a confined space, friction becomes very severe either between two clouds or between clouds and external air. This friction causes a discharge that involves a voltage difference that reaches 300,000 volts per foot causing lightning to happen. The air along this discharge is heated to about 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and this contributes to a very rapid expansion of air and formation of a shock wave that is heard as a thunder. Tornadoes also happen as a consequence of thunderstorms. As the air escaping from the cloud in form of spinning columns at very high speeds that reach 200 knots touches the earth, it forms a funnel cloud that possess a great destructing power which is able to destroy building and trees. Needless to say that such high voltage in form of thunder can kill birds in the sky, but it also can reach the ground and cause death to people and even electrocute fish in the ocean if they were in the area of the strike and near the surface. In the last 20 years, thunders were considered the second cause of death in the US due to deadly weather just behind floods. So you can imagine how Colonel William was doing while being entrapped in this extreme weather, but let's see first if it was safer for him if he didn't have to eject and get out of his aircraft. Can an aircraft be fully safe when flying inside a thunderstorm? One of the biggest pilots fears is thunderstorms, that's why they always evade them and it is prohibited to fly into them and this is due to several reasons. The first reason is the severe turbulence that happens inside and around a thunderstorm to a degree that makes the pilot lose control over the aircraft. The second one is the lightning which possesses an enormous amount of voltage that is able to puncture the body of the plane and it can also cause damage to the gauges inside the cockpit. 
Hailstones also can be as big as three quarters of an inch, and the circle of danger here extends to several miles around the storm, as those big hailstones can be lifted at high speeds by the means of speedy winds coming out of the cloud. One last reason is the crash danger associated with taking off and landing under a thunderstorm. Because the wind escapes from the storm downwards toward the Earth then this vertical movement of air turns into a horizontal movement on the surface, this opposing horizontal wind can help the airplane to gain altitude very fast on taking off before it finds itself under the vertical wind which forces it down causing it to fly at a dangerously low level and in worst scenarios crash. The same thing can happen during landing causing the airplane to crash before it gets the chance to reach the runway. Now all this being said about thunderstorms, how do you think Colonel William Rankin was doing in such extreme weather? Exactly at 6 p.m. on a summer day, Colonel William encountered an engine failure and a fire warning in addition to system failure which obligated him to eject and abandon the aircraft to start a procedure of a freefall dive. Normally skydivers jump at an altitude of 10 to 13,000 feet, and jumping at altitudes which are more than 15,000 feet requires special equipment which the colonel did not have. So falling from 47,000 feet, he suffered from severe decompression due to the very low atmospheric pressure at this point which caused his nose to bleed and his stomach to swell double its size. He also lost one of his hand gloves causing it to freeze and jeopardizing his ability to open the parachute. When he entered the thunderstorm, the parachute opened by itself due to the severe movements around. Because of the fast upward movement of air and water inside the cloud, he found himself trapped inside the storm for about 40 minutes. During this time, he suffered from hailstones pelting, frost bites and air sickness from continuously moving up and down. He was deafened by thunder and blinded by lightning that he said, boy do I remember that lightning. And because the air was highly saturated with water, he started sometimes to suffocate, so he began to take deep breaths and hold them. He started telling himself that if he was going to die here, he shouldn't die from drowning. At last he came out of the storm to land on a tree trunk where he slammed his head to find himself 65 miles away from where he ejected. Colonel William Rankin lived 15 years after this incident to tell the story, and up till now he is known as the man who rode the thunder after the title of his book. Now like always, if you have a question that you need an answer for, do not hesitate to post it below, and if you like the content of this video, please hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the ring bell so that you can see our new videos.